An army is a highly organized military force tasked primarily with the protection of a certain people or cause. A soldier pledges allegiance to his country or a cause willingly, except in states of emergency, when constituted authority insists on his joining. Every army operates under the leadership of a brilliant captain who must be well versed in the art of formulating foolproof attack or defense war strategies. The success of these strategies is largely dependent on the ability of the soldiers to carry out instructions. For this reason, there are various requirements for anyone looking to be enlisted into the army. God's army consists of like-minded men and women who are totally passionate about and wholly given to fight the good fight of faith. Unlike in the earthly military, here conscription is not in practice. The only prerequisite is surrendering to the captain, Jesus, obeying his commands and trusting him to lead the way. After all, he can never lead his servants astray. The question worthy of meditation is, are you in the Lord's army? The Christian life is a constant fight. Those who are fearful and faint-hearted cannot stand the heat of the battleground. United in Christ, our common enemies are the world, our own flesh and sinful nature, and most relentless, the devil. Never underestimate the power these three entities can display. The world refers to external influences from our friends, families, people and things around us. Peer pressure is not only effective amongst teenagers. At any age, the need for public validation can make us do the things we know God disapproves of. What an irony, to please men and displease God. Our own flesh and our sinful nature is even more dangerous. Addictions, unholy cravings, lust of the flesh takes a great toll on our ability to run this race and win. Our flesh, so limiting and easily moved, it weakens us. How sad is it that you can walk against yourself by yourself? Lastly, the devil is never tired of trying to tempt and make us fall out of our places as God's soldiers. He knows what God's army can achieve, so he walks round the clock, trying to build a counterfeit army of his own. The only way one can win this raging battle is to be on God's side, the winning side. From the moment someone gives his life to Jesus and confesses their faith in him, they are officially being enlisted in his army. They definitely gain the right to counter evil with the overwhelming, consuming, earthquaking power of God. Though drafted in God's army, it takes special training to stop being mere recruits and move into the realm of spiritual warriors and strongholds. This basic training requires great sacrifice, discipline and faith. As a soldier in God's army, you must be teachable. God can never be partial. So this training is open to as many people as are willing to undergo it. At the end of the day, these people emerge as weapons and dangerous firebrands in God's hands. The devil and his cohorts see them and tremble. They bring liberation to their grassroots, light to darkness, truth to disgrace every lie. God's army is mighty. It is great in the pulling apart of chains and bondage. It is as pure as it is brave. The soldiers are radical and cannot be intimidated, neither can they be bribed. Once they enter a place, the spiritual atmosphere changes. Wicked forces recognize them. They are confident and they are humble. Because they have Captain Jesus calling all the shots, they follow faithfully. Every battle they fight is a confirmed way. Are you in the Lord's army? Every soldier needs an arm. An unarmed soldier in the battlefield would be a disaster magnet. God's soldiers may never have to fight with nuclear weapons or the heavy modern machineries of mass destruction. Be that as it may, 
He still provides all they need to be protected and fight valiantly. In Ephesians 6, 14 to 17, he gives clear instructions. First, soldiers should fasten the belt of truth and wear the breastplate of righteousness. How does this apply to our everyday lives? A man who knows God's truth stands firm, unmoved by whatever he sees. His eyes are set on the goal and there is no place for doubt in his heart. A righteous person possesses moral rectitude and courage. He can easily detect the line between right and wrong. Even in grey areas, he is not afraid or ashamed to remain on the correct side of things. He is easy to spot by the purity of his conduct and his treatment of others. He is law-abiding. Although fully aware of his power, this man does not abuse it. Nothing untoward can pierce through to his heart because it is protected round and about with righteousness. Most importantly, he does not struggle to please God. Another part of this uniform are the shoes of readiness given by the gospel of peace. A good soldier should be agile, alert, watchful and always prepared to defend his territory. The devil is very crafty and relentless. A lazy or inadequately prepared soldier will find it very hard to escape his trappings. Be quick to resist. Be ever ready. Very important also is the shield of faith. This one protects the armor itself. When the opposing side releases disappointment, setbacks, grief, sickness, financial instability, depression, rejection, and shame in an attempt to wear down your spirit, hide behind your shield of faith. When things go from bad to worst to worst, hold up your shield of faith. As a covering for your head, use the helmet of salvation. The word of God is the sharpest sword ever. Use it. It cuts the plans of the devil to uselessness. Be armed. Be equipped. Be vigilant always. Know your weapons of warfare and do not hesitate to use them in dividing the devices of the evil one asunder. Watch and pray. Join God's army today. Right now. Time is of the essence. The battle is fierce. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. We need these peculiar weapons to ensure our victory. It would be unwise for any soldier to leave any part of his armor undone. The standard cannot be less. A chink in the armor exposes the weakness of the soldier and grants easy access for the enemy's weapons to penetrate and injure him. God is not desperate for people to fight for him. In fact, he chooses quality over quantity. He wants people with an understanding of the times. He is on the lookout for those who can maintain battle formation. He is calling for those whom he can use to subdue the devil. The greatest favor you can do yourself is by securing an alignment with Christ to earn a place in this formidable army. Turn your eyes to Jesus to lead. Don't bother about whether or not your strength can carry you. In Job 3 verse 10 be, God is strong. Let the weak say, I am strong, a warrior. Just believe and watch yourself be transformed into God's battle axe, a mighty man or woman of valor.